I'm going to take a simple chord progression, one that you might just play on a keyboard or you get from a MIDI pack or you get from a loop library. And I'm going to show you how you can edit the MIDI to make it more sophisticated, more authentic, make it sound more lush, make it sound more, more pro. And you can recycle and reuse these techniques with any other instrument using MIDI. So here is the chord progression I'm going to be using. Here's that progression with a beat, just so you can get an idea of how it sounds with movement. I'm gonna take these same chords and apply some techniques and it's gonna sound eventually like this. The first technique I want to explain to make this original whirly sound a bit more interesting is to find out the key of the song that we're in so we can add any inversions, add six, sevenths, um, ninths, elevenths, any other notes that might make it sound more sophisticated, but also to do uh, passing chords in your chord progression too. So the chords in this chord progression, I've written them down on the side here. We have D sharp minor, C sharp, and G sharp minor, uh, otherwise known as a 6-5-2. I'll explain that in a second, just stick, stick with me here. This is in the key of F sharp major. And I use this site a lot. I'm gonna flip over to this site called piano-keyboard-guide.com. And it just shows chords in all major keys. And then scrolling down here, it says chords in all minor keys you can see that our chord progression is in this row. We have the D sharp minor, the C sharp, and then we have the G sharp minor. This is what I meant by a six, five, two. This is the sixth chord in F sharp major. This, this is the fifth chord in F sharp major. And then this is the second chord. Don't worry if you don't understand all that. The important thing to take away from this is to, once you find the key of your song, you have these, this row of notes where you can use in your chord progression to make it sound cooler. Knowing that information now, what you can do is take your chord progression, so let open up the MIDI editor, and you can search for the seventh note. Our first chord is D sharp minor. So we need to find, or you, you don't need to, but you can one way is to find the seventh note in that chord of D sharp minor. So we're kind of stepping outside, we're going to look for the seventh note in D sharp minor. And one way to find that is going back over to your chart here, the minor key. We have D sharp minor, and we just go to the seventh note, which is C sharp. So I just looked at D sharp minor, went all the way to the end here, which is seven and C sharp. So I can go back to logic, just look for a C sharp note. There's a C sharp. So just by adding that seventh note, it already sounds a bit cooler. There's, this is what it sounds like without. Now with the seventh. And that's exactly what I did in the new whirly here. I went to add the C sharp. It's right here. Now let's talk about inversions. Inversions are easy to understand because you can take any note you have in the chord and move it up or down an octave. So I could do the same thing with the seventh. I can bring that seventh that C sharp down 12 semitones by holding shift option down arrow. And that will still work. I can bring it, I can undo that and I can go to the A sharp in that D sharp minor chord and bring that down 12 semitones. Same thing with this note. The more notes you bring down 12 octaves like that, the deeper it's going to sound. And so you don't know, you don't want to bring every note down or up 12 semitones, but a good place to start, I should say, is to start with the highest note in the key and just move that down 12 semitones. So we can do that to the second chord, for example, in the C sharp chord, we can take the highest note here and move that down. And that's another thing I did with this new whirly. I looked for different notes and I brought them up or down 12 semitones just to find a feeling that sounds good. The next thing you can do is adding passing chords in your chord progression. So notice the space we have in this chord progression on the last chord, the G sharp minor.
It lasts for two whole bars, where we can find passing chords that we can use in this last bar that's just going to create a bit more excitement and sound cooler. And to know what chords you should use, go back to your chart here, to your F sharp major, and you can use any of these chords. Now, some are going to sound better than others. The chords I used in our new whirly here was F sharp and B. These chords are, this is an F sharp, this is a B. And we have F sharp here is the one, and the B is the four chord. And this sounds like this. Sometimes adding passing chords can make it sound too busy, so you have to just add it in taste to what the song really needs. So that's the first technique to making something sound a bit more sophisticated. Use inversions, use passing chords, and try to add, try to start with adding a seventh note here or there in some of your chords to make it sound cool. And you don't have to do all of this, right? Sometimes adding seventh notes on every chord is just going to sound too jazzy. Let's talk about the second technique to make your chords sound a little more sophisticated, and that's just velocity. So this does happen to do with MIDI. If you're playing something or recording something, the velocity will be will carry through from your fingers. This original Whirly, um, these chords were drawn in by me. So you can see if I open up the automation A and bring up velocity, notice that it's just straight. All the velocity is at 100. They're all these red notes, except that seventh that we added that we're gonna delete right now. That just sounds way too boring and exhausting to your ear. Notice the velocity that's in this chord progression. I actually played these chords, so you're going to see much more of a, a, a different pattern in velocity. It's a bit all over the place, but it's not too all over the place. And if you need to go and dial in, you can click notes and change the velocity on the, the left-hand side here with the slider. You can change groups of velocity at the same time relatively. Or another way is just to, I have the right-click tool up with my velocity tool. So if I right click a note and drag down, I can easily control velocity like that as well. That's what I like to do. It's just a subjective thing. So with these velocity changes, and let's just add the beat so we can have a bit more movement here. Third thing you can do to make your chords sound more lush, just to play with the timing and quantization of your MIDI notes. Notice in our original Whirly, we have all the notes quantized as whole notes right in the beginning of bar five, bar six, and bar seven. In our new Whirly, notice the timing of things. And if I zoom in, you'll, you'll see it. Nothing is actually really on the grid. Everything is just behind the grid a, a little bit, but if we zoom out, it does seem like it's on the grid. However, a normal human would never play like that. That's why I like to push everything just a little bit behind the grid, and I'll get into that a bit more in the sec in a second. But before we talk about quantization, I want to talk about um, overall timing, which is notice that the second chord is actually played even uh, on the upbeat before bar six. So in our original progression, we have a chord being played on bar five and a chord being played on bar six. Notice in our new early where the chord is placed. You don't always have to put the chord on the, the downbeat of every bar. If you do that in every se section of your song, it's just going to be, the listener is going to know what to expect every chord. And it's sometimes nice to surprise the listener to make it sound more sophisticated. So if I bring the beat in, notice what it sounds like with when it's on the bar one, and notice what it sounds like when it's on the upbeat. So this is the original. <laughs> That sounds kind of comfortable, right? Everything's straight, everything's on the one. This is the new one. There's also an upbeat chord over here with a passing chord. So those upbeats, they provide more movement as well because they're kind of pushing things a bit forward. It's not to say that downbeat chords are always bad, I use downbeat chords all the time, but this is how you can break out of the box. Coming back to quantization, how I like to do it, and one way you can start to do this if you play on your keyboard, maybe you're 
playing on your MIDI keyboard is great. You don't have to quantize it at all. But I like to start with things quantized, and then I go over to, I make, I make sure I have all the MIDI notes highlighted. And then I go over to my region editor, and I go down to QFLAM. And that's going to flam, like flam the notes out like this. This is a flam. A flam would actually kind of look more like more like this, but then you can bring some of the notes back. And that means they're just going to be all played at slightly different times, which just makes it sound more real and more interesting. And I do that for every single chord that I play. And I'm shifting notes here or there a little bit by clicking them, holding option, and doing left or right arrow. This is moving a note by a tick. And to choose the ticks that you want to move by, you can always just right click and set your nudge value to a tick or 10 ticks. I usually have it as 10 ticks, and that means it's gonna move by this much if I'm just holding option and going right and then going left. So if I want this one to move a bit closer, I might move that in. I can move this one in a bit more too. And then it's all about just listening back, especially to your groove with your beat, and just to, is the feeling there of where you want those notes to be placed. And it's all about just working with the feeling, working with your groove, delaying your groove a bit, pushing the groove, finding that placement of your chord. So things are just sitting really nicely. So where do you go from here? Because this isn't just a full song, right? How I would go out from here would be to, I would duplicate the MIDI, and then I would join them by going Command J. And then I would just open up my editor again. And I always would resort to not just duplicating things like this, but I would make the second section here, this part, a little bit different. So I would change the velocity of the notes a little bit. I might go back, change the inversions a bit. I would change the, the chord shapes a little bit. Maybe I don't want the passing chords here. I've added some passing notes, as you, as you, have, as you saw, but I haven't explained here. So these are, these are just passing notes. And again, if you don't know the notes, go back to your chart, find your F sharp and you can use these passing notes. So when I'm building up my song in every section, I never try to have a replica of something. I'm always trying to change the timing quantization a little bit from each section. I'm trying to change the velocity, the notes within the chord, the passing chords, just so it's not, they can be very similar from section to section, and they should. You don't want to be changing chords all over the place, but they should vary a little bit to keep it uh, interesting for the listener. Let me know what you guys think in a comment, and I hope to see you in the next video.